thank you for reminding us uh, about the importance of God's Word. And that's what I'm talking about today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalms chapter 19. We're going to take a little break here from Revelation for two weeks. Uh, we had a Gideon speaker lined up months ago, and then next week is Father's Day, and I want to speak to the fathers, and then we will get back. And when we start in chapter 4, folks, I'm just telling you, it takes off, all right? Uh, you're, you're going to enjoy uh, the rest of our study. The importance of God's Word. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along, let me give you the outline. Number one, God's Word is perfect. God's Word is perfect. Number two, God's Word is sure. It is sure. Number three, God's Word is right. It is right. And number four, God's Word is clean. And folks, I cannot tell you how important the Word of God is to a growing Christian. The Word of God is everything to us as Christians. It is God's message to us. It is His handwritten. And I know the authors were the ones that wrote it down, but He told them exactly what to say. And everything that we believe, all of our doctrine, all of our ordinances, everything that we believe is in the Word of God. And people down through the centuries have been trying to change that. But folks, you cannot change perfection. God is the only perfect person. Jesus Christ lived 33 years here and was perfect. So as we look at this today, I want to show you six characteristics of the Word of God. We listed uh, four of them there, perfect, sure, right, and clean. And then it is also uh, true. The Word of God is true, and it brings salvation to those who believe. So let's look at Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. And we think of the law, we think of teaching in the Old Testament. We think of the Ten Commandments. We think of the Old Testament prophets. And really, when you see the word perfect, it literally means flawless. There are no contradictions. Everything that is prophesied in the Old Testament has come true. Everything that is prophesied in the Old Testament, you can see coming uh, uh, through in the New Testament. The Old Testament talked about a Messiah and a Jesus. And every promise of God has always came true. So we see that the law is perfect. And what does it do? Converting the soul. Folks, that is the most important decision a person makes in life. And even in our witness, sometimes we are not bold in our witness because we are afraid that we will mess the salvation message up. And folks, I am telling you, it is God that saves. We can give our testimony. We can share Scripture. But it is the holy God that saves, and His Word is perfect. And we need to remember that. Turn to 2 Timothy with me, if you would talking about the Word of God and the importance of the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned. Folks, we've learned a lot in our lifetimes. We've learned a lot. But I am telling you, to know the Word of God is the most important thing that you learn. I'm all for getting an education or a master's or a doctor's or even a PhD if that's what you choose to do. But the second part of that verse, it is salvation. You can have every degree there is. And if you don't have Christ in your life, you lose. You lose. The Bible says you will die and spend an eternity in hell apart from God. So the thing about the Word of God, it is perfect, and it is salvation. Look what it says, knowing from, 
whom you have learned then, and that from childhood you know the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, Jesus is in every book of the Bible. God is in every book of the Bible. It's all about Jesus. It's all about faith. It's not just your intellect. Had a pastor tell me one time, I heard this. Actually, it was an evangelist. There are many people that are 12 inches from heaven. 12 inches. That's the difference between head knowledge and having Christ in your heart. And God's Word illuminates scriptures. God's Word tells us the way to salvation. Now look at this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's from God. And I understand the writers, they were imperfect. But God used them to write down His perfect Word. It is profitable for doctrine. That's what we believe for reproof at what we shouldn't be doing, for correction. He corrects us because he loves us. For instruction, we all need instruction from God. In righteousness, now here it is, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Oh, folks, we are not complete as a Christian apart from the Word of God. We need the Word of God in our life. Why? Because it is perfect. Jesus was perfect. John 1 says He is the living Word. And while He was here, He was Bible in human flesh. And now we have copies of the Word of God where we know how we need to strive for perfection. So God's Word is perfect. Number two, verse eight, and the stat, no, excuse me, uh, the second part of, of verse seven, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise simple. What's a testimony? A testimony is what we say, and uh, you know, what God has done in our life. And folks, the testimony of God is in these written words, these written words. And it says, and make the wise, make the wise simple. You can have childlike faith and come to Christ. We make it harder than it is. Folks, it is God's testimony. You can count on it. His word is true. His word is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There is much wisdom in the word of God, and it is sure. Proverbs chapter 9. Look over in Proverbs, if you would. Proverbs 9. Proverbs 9, verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will still be wiser. Folks, we never arrive spiritually. You cannot say, I know every chapter in the Word of God. You can't say that I've got all of God's instructions down. So we need to keep learning. Keep learning. There's wisdom. Proverbs is the wisdom chapter. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. And folks, we never need to be satisfied where we are spiritually. 2 Peter 3.18 tells us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, even as I'm going through, this will be the fourth time I've taught Revelation in my ministry. And every week, God reminds me of something or illuminates Scripture that I did not think of. And folks, every time you pick up the Word of God, you're going to learn. And we need to be learners of Christ. We need to do that in our own life. Now look at verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is respect. It's reverence. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It's knowing who God is. It's knowing why Jesus came. It's knowing how to be saved. 
It's knowing that this word is true. It is yes, and it is amen. Verse 11, for by me your days will be multiplied and your years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Oh, folks, when you read the Word of God, it is as you are talking to God Himself. It is called fellowship with God. It is learning from God. Let me tell you something. The greatest counselor in the world is not a human being, folks. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. But yet we don't take the time to dig into the Word of God and to learn from the Word of God. And folks, every Christian should have a concordance. I, I use the strong concordance where that you can look up any word in Scripture and you can learn. I call them word studies. For instance, the word forgiveness there are many, many scriptures on forgiveness. And there are people that doesn't have that down yet. And we can learn and we can be counseled from God's holy word. And that's the second time in scripture, the more you learn, the longer you live. The more, the more wisdom you have in your life. Proverbs and the word of God is full of wisdom. So we understand God's Word is perfect. We understand God's Word is sure. And the third thing, God's Word is right. God's Word is right. Look back in our text again. Psalm 19, verse 8, and the statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. What are the statues? Well, folks, it started in the Old Testament. And it's not just the Ten Commandments. The statues are the way we as Christians are supposed to live. It's how we know what to say. We know what to do. Even in the Old Testament, there were specific dates that they needed to observe. There were things that they needed to do because they were God's chosen people. And so the Word of God teaches us not only who we are, but what we are supposed to be in Jesus Christ. That's what the statutes are. They are right. The second part of that, rejoice in the heart. Rejoice in the heart. You want to be blessed by God? Get in His Word. You know where you find joy? The J stands for Jesus. You find joy in Jesus. The O is for others. You invest in other people's lives. We are supposed to be disciples of Christ. We are supposed to be mentors of others. We are supposed to help others who are new Christians and don't understand the Word of God. That is others and why yourself is last. We need to take care of our spiritual business. God tells us in Scripture what we need to be doing. And some of you, the reason you don't have joy in your life because you are not spending time with the man who can give you joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm telling you, you look around sometimes and you look at Christians and you look at their face and it's just like, whoo, what'd you have for breakfast? Deal pickle juice? <laughs> Folks, the Word of God should bring us joy. Should bring us joy. We ought to be excited about a quiet time and spending time with God. We spend time with people we love, and we say we love God. And we can directly connect. We're talking about connect here in everything that we do. We need to connect with God's holy word so that there will be joy in our lives. The Bible says in Psalm 1, Psalm 1, I love this scripture. Psalm 1, blessed is a man 
who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. How do we know how to walk? It's in the Word of God. It's in the Word of God. We need to spend time in the Word of God. And then he gives the, the uh, list of three things who we do not, that we do not need to do as Christians. Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Folks, the world is trying to tell us what to do. And it's almost as if Hollywood and other people have taken what the Word of God says and tells us to do the exact opposite. I am so tired of people trying to tell me what's going to make me happy. Being on drugs is not going to make me happy. Cheating on my wife is not going to make me happy. These things, alcohol, is not going to make me happy. You are only happy when you have the joy of the Lord in your life. We walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the paths of sinners. First we walk, and then we stand with them. And folks, I believe with all my heart, the closer we get to the second come, or, or to the rapture of the church, there is this dividing line, and even the lost people can understand what that line is. And they don't like us as Christians because we don't agree with what they say. And folks, you hang around a skunk long enough, you are going to stink, all right? And sin is sin, and God is God, and we need to follow God and let the world do their own thing. I am not interested in the world. <laughs> Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Notice that. We walk, we sit, and we stand. Now we're, we're hanging out with them. And I understand you need to have lost friends, but they do, do not need to influence you where you're doing what they're doing. They need Jesus. You have to leave that door open. We don't have to be high and mighty and we act like they're better than them. They know when we are concerned about their heart and they know when we are just judging them. So do it the way God says. Now look at verse 2. But his delight, talking about the Christian, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Folks, this is black and white. This is as plain as Scripture should get. I started this years ago. I used to, when I was a teenager, just read my Bible maybe once a day. But what I found out, my life is much better when I start my day with Christ and I end my day with Christ through the Word of God. Folks, we started at the beginning of the day. You know why? Because Satan's going to throw them darts at you. You walk out Monday morning, you got a flat tire. How are you going to react to that? Are you going to walk in the Spirit? Or are you going to be mad at life the whole day? Begin with the Word of God. And in night, folks, it prepares your mind and your heart for restful sleep. The last thing I want to think of is God and His Scriptures. Psalms is a good place. Just reading through the Psalms. Reading through Proverbs, I've done this many times, by the day of the week, taking Psalms and Proverbs and reading that chapter. Now look at verse 3, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruits in due season. And folks, any tree that is close to water is going to flourish. It's going to flourish. And the thing about a tree is we look at the beauty of a tree and of the fruit and of the colors and all, but the most important thing on that tree is its roots. If those roots dry up, if those roots rot, the tree will die. But I'm telling you, those roots in the Christian life is the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It sustains you. It gives you fruit. It is everything. And you think about a huge oak tree. You can climb in it. You can use it for firewood. There's so much is. And that's what he's saying there. Now look what it says. Whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. You want to prosper? Get in the Word, folks. 
Get in the Word. That's what Psalms said. The Word is right. It instructs us. It enlightens us. And then the last thing, God's Word is clean. God's Word is clean. Look at verse 9, back in our text. Psalms 19.9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. What is clean? Folks, it's clean living. It's a clean mouth. I'm amazed what comes out of some people's mouths. I just think, did they really just say that? And folks, we need to live clean lives. Clean lives. Because that is what the Bible tells us to do. We need to open our eyes. We need to see God for who He is and what He has done for us. We need to respect and reverence the Lord. I know sometimes I see children or youth, and I'm not talking about ours. I'm simply saying they, they do not treat the Bible the way it should be treated. I do not believe a Bible sh should be thrown down on the ground. We need to respect it. Okay, I don't, I, I've seen this happen too. I've seen people, and, and again, we go to kids, and I'm, I'm going back to other churches, all right? I'm simply saying I've seen one kid take a Bible and hit another kid in the head with the Bible. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? Folks, we need to respect it. We need to teach our kids. And when you think, and while I'm at it, you're, you're welcome, okay? <laughs> what would happen if we paid as much attention to the Word of God as we do, you know, electronics. Let me just give a electronic. No, let me be specific here. Our phones. I see parents babysitting kids by handing them the phone. And then I see parents say this, you're not supposed to be on that site. Duh. They wouldn't be on that site if you didn't give them the phone. And I know we need phones. I know, I know sometimes I sound like, but I'm telling you folks, video games, I mean, I've seen kids that spend four, five, and six hours a day on a phone playing a game. But we can't give God 10 minutes. We can't give God 20 minutes. And I know this sounds old-fashioned, but I'm going to say it anyway. Where has our family devotions went to? And I'm, not, I'm talking about, I don't care what age you are. I'm talking senior adults, down to parents with kids. Where's the time that we all gather? You know what our table, our table in our dining room is good for? Collecting dust. Man, I'm telling you, when I, when I was a kid, you came to the table. You talked to one another. You told how your day was. And folks, we need to get back to that and surround that with the Word of God. The Word of God. A family that prays together stays together. A family that reads the Word of God will have a whole lot less problems in their lives. Look at verse, rest of verse 9. I'm out of time. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. They are more desired than gold. Well, folks, when we think of gold, we think of something that is very expensive. But folks, we have something that money cannot buy. We have the Word of God. We have peace of mind. We have everlasting life. We have heaven waiting for us. We have an assignment from God, and that is to share the gospel in all of life, all of our Christian life needs to surround the Word of God. Psalm 119.9. Psalm 119.9. How can a young man cleanse his way? By obeying the Word of God. Cleanse his way take, by taking heed according to your Word. We, it's not enough just to read it, folks. We need to study it, and we need to obey it, and we need to meditate the biggest mistake people make in reading their Bible, you do it to conquer. 
You do it to say, I read my Bible today. But if you didn't meditate, you went too fast, folks. Now look what it says. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Here it is, your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. I want to ask you a question. How many verses do you have memorized? I'm just asking. It's a rhetorical question. And do you know what the best thing it is? Do you know the best reason to memorize Scripture? So that when Satan comes at you, you throw him a verse or two. And you know what happens? You stop thinking of that temptation because your mind is so you cannot think two thoughts at once. You can't think them at the same time. Romans chapter 6, what shall I say then? Shall I continue that sin, sin may abound? God forbid, how am I that am dead to sin live any longer therein? If David would have went out and he saw Bathsheba, he realized, you know, she was unclothed. If he would have just went back inside, got on his knees, and started quoting Scripture, and the last thing saying, God, take this image from me, it would have done him a lot of good. Now, folks, we've got to meditate. Meditate on Scripture. Memorize Scripture. Then the last thing, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Oh, how I love your law. Verse 97. It is my meditation all the day long. I love it when I hear that people on a break or people at the lunchtime has their sandwich out and they have the Word of God out reading the Word of God. You, through our commandments, make you wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimony are my meditation. There, that's the word again. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way. Look at the things the Word of God will do for you, that I may keep your Word. I have not depart departed from your judgment, for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. You realize there's some things you can hate? Not very many, but you can hate Satan. You can hate sin. You can hate lies. You can hate deceit. And Satan is lying to you. Because here's what he's told you. You don't have enough time. Well, folks, every one of us have 24 hours a day, and we choose how to use those 24 hours. I admonish you. I beg you. I cannot tell you how important it is that you establish a quiet time. Nothing on your Bible and you, in God. Now verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light into my path. I want to say as we close, I personally, and I believe our church, fully supports the Gideon ministry. The Bible, God's holy word, is the best-selling book of all times. It, was the, it is the greatest book ever written. It will totally change your life it is a vital part of success in the Christian life. Let's make God's holy word a priority in our lives. Father, thank you for your holy word. God, thank you for speaking to us from the word of God. I thank you for the Gideon ministry. And God, we are literally giving to something that lasts forever forever. And God, my prayer today is if there's one here that doesn't know you, they may have tried everything in the world. But God, if today is the day, God, I pray that they would come down this aisle and simply say, I need to give my heart and my life to Jesus. I need to be saved. And God, I pray for the Christian here. Lord, sometimes we get in bad habits and sometimes we just, we're not reading our Bibles like, like we should. We're not spending enough time with you. We're not writing scripture down or journaling or memorizing. God, I pray that you would challenge us through your word 
and through the Holy Spirit. Maybe we need to rededicate our life to Christ. And Lord, others may need to come for baptism or church membership. God, this is your time. This is your church. This is your invitation. So God, I pray that we would simply say right now, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And God, I pray that we will obey. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?